We're now in part two. We're going to look at limiting reagents. So in any chemical reaction, you eventually run out of reactant or fuel, okay? and the reaction just comes to an end. And the limiting reagent determines the maximum amount of product that can be made. So we're going to revisit our recipe A here. And recipe A allows you to make one cake. Now, recipe B, you can see that you have half the starting amount of ingredients as A, so that means you can make just half a cake. And that's pretty obvious. But in recipe C, we have 500 eggs, 500 cups of sugar, 500 cups of flour, but just half a cup of frosting. So then I'll ask you, how much cake can be made? And the answer is just half a cake, because you are limited by the amount of frosting. The amount of frosting determines how much product can be made, so it actually doesn't matter how many eggs or sugar or flour you have. I'm writing an E above them because those are in excess. Your limiting reagent is your frosting, so your frosting determines how much cake can be produced, the maximum amount of cake. Let's do another basic example. So making a car, okay, so one steering wheel plus one engine plus four tires will give you one car. It's a really crude example. I know there's much more that goes into a car, like the timing belt, the battery, the alternator, etc. Okay, but we'll just go with this. This is the recipe to make a car. Okay, so now let's say we have two steering wheels, we have two engines, and we have eight tires. So all I did was I just doubled the starting amount of stuff, and it's obvious that we can create two cars from this. Now, if I brought in 35 steering wheels, six engines, and seven tires, how many cars can I make? And the answer, which might come as a surprise to some of you, is actually just one car, because I am limited by the amount of tires that I have. Seven tires is not even enough to come up with two cars. So my tires are the limiting reagent and it doesn't matter if I have 35 steering wheels or six engines, those are in excess. I'm limited by the amount of tires that I have, which means I can make at the most just one car. So you have steps for limiting reagents outlined in your notes. It still falls back on basic principles of stoichiometry, which I covered in part one of the series. Now most problems will look like this. They're gonna give you a balanced equation. And first you need to figure out which one of the two reactants is the limiting reagent. So you'll see a chemical equation, just like in problem 16, and I boxed the two reagents in red. So you have to do something called a cross comparison, and then you can figure out which one is the limiting reagent. So the limiting reagent again is like trying to figure out which one is the frosting and which one is the tires, right? So which one will determine how much of the maximum product can be made. And then once you figure out the limiting reagent, you can go from there, and then you can find out how much of the underlying product can be produced. In problem 16, I'm gonna go ahead and box my two reagents, so NO2 and H2O, and I will cross compare these two reagents to see which one is the limiting factor. And I'm gonna call NO2 compound A, and H2O compound B. I'm gonna write the word have, and let's see what we have. 26.9 grams of NO2 are reacted with 3.55 grams of water. So I'm gonna carry out a stoichiometry problem where I'm changing grams of A to grams of B. So there's a few steps, okay? So remember you have to get from grams to moles first by dividing by the molar mass of NO2, which is 46. So those would cancel out in red. Let's continue onwards. The next step is cutting and pasting. So if you look at the balance equation, you would see that there are three moles of NO2 and one mole of water. So my moles of NO2 will now go away. I'm gonna cancel those out in orange. And the last step is to get from moles of water into grams of water. So one mole of water weighs 18 grams. OK, 
Okay, you need a calculator for this part. 26.9 times 18 divided by 46 times 3. I'm going to make sure water cancels out. And we're going to get 3.5 grams of water. And we're going to write the word need above this. So this column represents the amount of water and NO2 that are needed. So now I'm going to go down and we're going to finish this one off. We're going to change water, grams of water, into grams of NO2. So I drew a black arrow above so you can see what we're trying to do here. Divide by the molar mass to get it into moles of water. Cancel, cancel. Time sign, draw a line, and we're going to cut and paste in this step. So one mole of water goes on the bottom, three moles of NO2 will go on top. Moles of water will cancel. Keep going. Change moles of NO2 into grams of NO2. So you're going to multiply by the molar mass, which is 46. Multiply all the numbers on top, 3.55 times 3 times 46, divide by 18. And we are going to get 27.21 grams of NO2. I'm going to go ahead and box water in green. And they're supposed to be diagonal from each other like this. It's the way that it's supposed to look. Okay, and the red box will go around NO2 so that it's easy for your eye to see how these things stack up to each other. So we're going to go ahead and draw some dotted lines going across, connecting the boxes of the same color. And now we can answer these questions. Okay, remember question A is asking which reactant is in excess. So I take one glance at these numbers and I realize water is in excess because the number 3.55, what I have, is greater than what I need, which is just 3.5. So I have a little bit of extra water. So water is in excess. Part B, letter B, which reactant is the limiting reagent? So it's clear to me that when I look at the numbers in the red boxes, 26.9, what I have for NO2, is a little bit less than what's needed, 27.21. So because that number is less, that means NO2 is a limiting reagent. And letter C, how many grams of the excess reagent is going to be left over? So all you have to do is just some subtraction here. 3.55 minus 3.5 will get you 0 0.05 grams of extra H2O. And letter D, how many grams of the underlying product will be produced? So this one is another stoichiometry problem where you're going to take your limiting reagent, which we found in letter B, was NO2. And they want to know how many grams of the underlying product, so this would be HNO3, nitric acid. You're going to call NO2 letter A, HNO3 letter B, and you're going to go from grams of A to grams of B. So our limiting reagent is NO2 and we have 26.9 grams of NO2. Time sign draw a line and we're just gonna change this until we get grams of HNO3. So just make sure you're following the steps. Okay, divide by the molar mass, 46 grams of NO2. So now we are currently in moles of NO2. Those units will cancel away in red. Time sign, draw a line. And the next step is cut and paste. So we have three moles of NO2 and two moles of HNO3. So the moles of NO2 will go away. I'm going to use blue for that. And continue with the problem. Change moles of HNO3 into grams of HNO3. So one mole of HNO3 will go on the bottom 
and the molar mass of one hydrogen, one nitrogen, and three oxygens weighs 63. Those are cancel out in orange. We're doing the right steps. So we are left with grams of HNO3. So this is what we did. We went from grams A to moles of A. We cut and paste. We're now in moles of B. And finally, we change moles of compound B to grams of B. So our answer, when you go 26.9 times one times two times 63, and divide that by the product of 46 times three, we will get 24.6 grams of nitric acid, HNO3. So once again, this is just saying, if you have 26.9 grams of NO2, it can potentially produce 24.6 grams of HNO3. So the limiting reagent always determines the maximum amount of product that can be made. In number 17, we are going to cross compare magnesium and H2SO4. So let's write down the word have. So it looks like we have 24.8 grams of magnesium and this is reacted with 93.5 grams of H2SO4. Time sign, draw a line. We're going to take care of magnesium first and we're going to change him to H2SO4 eventually. So one mole of Mg on top and the molar mass of magnesium is 24.3. Grams and grams will go away. Time sign, draw a line. We're now in the cut and paste step. So we're going from compound A to compound B. And if you look in the graphic that's above me, we want to do the cut and paste step. So one mole of Mg will go on the bottom. One mole of H2SO4 will go on top. So those we cancel out in green. And continue onwards, change your moles of H2SO4 to grams of H2SO4, and the molar mass is 98. So now moles of H2SO4 will go away in orange. And I'm going to write the word need. So this is how much H2SO4 is needed. It comes out to 100 grams. Now take care of what's on the bottom. Time sign, draw a line. Change grams of H2SO4 to grams of Mg. So again, there's a few steps. You need to follow the same three steps. Grams of A to moles of A. So we want grams of H2SO4 on the bottom. Again, the mass is 98. And one mole of H2SO4 will go on top. Time sign, draw a line. Because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, this one's easy. So just make sure moles of magnesium go on top. Okay, make sure your units have been canceling the way that they should. Time sign, draw a line. And now we're changing moles of Mg into grams of Mg. So you want to multiply by its molar mass, which again is on the periodic table. The mass of magnesium is 24.3. When you multiply everything out, you're going to get 23.18 grams of magnesium. So I will go ahead and box my H2SO4 in red. And again, they're supposed to be like crisscross and diagonal. That's just the way that it looks. Let's connect them with the red dotted lines. and I would choose to box my magnesium in green. And we're gonna connect them with some green dots. Letter A, which reactant is in excess? So just taking one quick glance at this, you would see that your boxes in green will show you the way. So your magnesium is in excess because you have 24.8 grams of magnesium, but you need just 23.18. So that means you have extra amounts of magnesium. So that one is in excess. 
So again, the answers are given, so you can check your work that way. And letter B is asking, which one is the limiting reagent? You have 93.5, but you need 100 grams. So obviously your H2SO4 is your limiting reagent. Letter C, how many grams of the excess reagent is going to be left over? Well, we just need to do some subtraction for this. 24.8 minus 23.18. So the extra amount that is left over is 1.62 grams of magnesium. So that's how many grams of excess is left over. And again, you can confirm with the key. For letter D, the answer is 115 grams. And I will do this on the next slide, but we just need to figure out a plan first. We're gonna change our limiting reagent, which is H2SO4, to magnesium sulfate. So in 17D, I'm going to call H2SO4 compound A, magnesium sulfate is compound B. So again, the plan is this, get from grams of A to moles of A, cut and paste, get to moles of B, and for moles of B, we are going to get into grams of B. So we know that our H2SO4 is a limiting reagent. We're gonna start with 93.5 grams of H2SO4. And we're gonna get this to moles of H2SO4 by dividing by its molar mass, which is 98 grams. So that will cancel. We're gonna get grams of A into moles of A, so that's what we just did. So the next step is to cut and paste. So the balance equation is really easy. Everything's just a one to one ratio. So one mole of H2SO4 will go on the bottom. One mole of magnesium sulfate will go on top. I'm gonna go ahead and erase that so you can see. Everything is just a one to one. So it's one H2SO4 for every one MgSO4. And we're gonna go ahead and cancel this out. We are currently in moles of compound B. So we're moving along this track. And the last thing to do is get moles of B to grams of B. So one mole of magnesium sulfate is equal to how many grams of MgSO4. And the molar mass of this compound, again, you need a periodic table, add up your magnesium, your sulfur, and your four oxygens. You're going to get around 120.3. So our answer, once you put this in a calculator, is around 115 grams of magnesium sulfate. So once again, 93.5 grams of H2SO4 has the ability to yield roughly 115 grams of magnesium sulfate. So that is stoichiometry, the limiting reagent once again determines how much of the product can be made. So H2SO4, because it's the limiting reagent, determines how much MgSO4 can truly be made. All right, guys, I hope you can see stoichiometry is a piece of cake. The limiting reagent is the reactant or the fuel that gets exhausted first in your reaction. So when it gets used up entirely, the reaction comes to an end, and that actually determines how much product can be made. Your limiting reagent always determines the maximum amount of product. I hope you liked my two-part series on stoichiometry. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.